we started in the lobby of the public theater and we have much thanks to give to HowlRound and the public theater for um, for helping us, especially since lockdown when we switched over to Zoom where we were doing it every day in a row for a little while and now we're back to once a week. So uh, I'm SLP, thanks to Audrey. And um, yeah, so, uh, if, if, so we're gonna work for 20 minutes, that's what we're gonna do. And then we're going to open it up for questions in the time remaining. And um, Audrey, you're gonna tell them how to ask questions, should they have questions? Yeah, definitely. Hi, everybody. Um, so if you have questions and you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do uh, when it comes time is click on the raise your hand button, which is in the reactions tab. It's likely on the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and if you're watching the stream not inside of the Zoom, um, you are very welcome to tweet at, at watch me work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D, um, or you can tweet at the public theater or write to our Instagram. And those are the ways. So many ways, there's so many ways. Okay, we're going to do this for 20 minutes and then we're going to uh, take questions from you. Here we go.
All right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> Those who have questions. Anybody has a question? I am here <laughs> in the daylight. It's so weird to I have know. the daylight. It's very strange. I mean, and we, and we do this every year, this daylight savings thing, and yet it feels particularly odd this year. I agree with you. I don't know what this year has really thrown me off. I know. Literally thrown me off. Oh, but we don't have any questions just yet. Okay. Ah. Oh, Jonathan, I love the analog cool. hand. Yeah, up. analog hand. Here you up. go. Yeah, Jonathan. Uh, hi there. Um, forgive me. I lost my AirPods. And so I got these like beautiful rushery things, which I love. No, and I'm in a coffee true. shop. So if you hear lots of noise, um, I'm not in a dorm room or something because of these clothes. You can buy these shirts. So um, anyway, <laughs> what, what is um, the coffee shop? Hi, so, uh, the it's, coffee shop? Uh, it's called Adonine. It's this cute little place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, Milwaukee. Yeah, here right we on. are. Yeah. Right on. Hey, Milwaukee. Um, yeah, so here's my question. I have been writing uh, with y'all back in the day in 2020 when the world was ending. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a draft of a play okay. and I then put it on a shelf because I had to find new housing and then I moved back to Milwaukee and here we are back in the world. And I have not touched it for a while. Uh -huh. And so I reread it, I printed it out and I reread it. And the things that I have found um, are, it feels very similar. The voices all sound a little similar, which mm -hmm. I would like to shake, shake up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I also feel like it is bones. Like there's not a lot of meat, like there is meat, but I want to like build on it and I want to give it some more nuance. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. And I was just kind of curious, this is sort of my first way going through this and that's sort of mm -hmm. how I did it. Uh -huh. I have a beginning, middle, end, it's cool, but Perfect. I just wasn't, I wanted to, yeah, more. And I was just curious if you could uh, help me dust this off in a uh, sure. new well, vigor. Co well, congratulations for all the things you've been doing. You wrote a draft and you, put it away and you moved and, I and now you take I mean that's a whole lot that's a whole lot sure quiet please um so now we're thinking so how do we go about this um I think so far everything you've done is great um to take it and read it print it out and re you read it aloud I'm guessing I didn't because I was in a public spot oh. again and I no worries no worries no that, worries, no worries. They would look at me weirdly if yeah, they yes. heard these words. Oh, totally, totally. So, um, but so you want to, so you want to, you know, thicken up the story, and yeah. you want to. Sounds like you want to, you know, really get some more variation between the voices of the characters, right? Yeah. So, um, are you clear on what each character is going for? What each character wants? Yeah, there is ways that that can be fleshed out. I, um, yeah, I feel like I'm discovering more about what it is. Like when I'm asking them, what is it that you're wanting here? Or what role do you, so right now it feels like I have like, here's the plot. I understand it. I understand how we get to the final piece. Okay. But I feel like those earlier parts is like, wait, but who are you and what yeah. stakes do you have in this right. story? That's exactly, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So if you can ask that of each of your characters, okay. you know, what are you doing in this scene? How are you contributing to the story? How is what you want uh, contributing to the story? You know, cause it, it, it's like, uh, I do this, this fun little math thing, two points make a line. So if a character, like for example, um, Let's think of a play we both might know, like Hamlet. You know Hamlet. Okay, so, you know, so there's Hamlet and Horatio. And Hamlet wants one, Hamlet wants a certain thing, right? So where he starts and where he ends, we can, those two points, those are going to determine his lines of dialogue, you could say, right? Two points make a line, that's a math, that's like geometry or whatever. But those points, his yeah. beginning point and his end point are going to determine his lines, 
of dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. Horatio wanting something different, his end point, his, his beginning point and his end point are different. And so his lines will probably be different, you see? So if you can really fix yourself to, and maybe you can do it within a scene. So we took the whole of Hamlet, right? So yeah, yeah. small it up and just go, where does Hamlet start in one scene? Scene one, for example, you know, or whatever, scene two, whatever, where he makes his entrance and where does he end in that scene, right? What does he want? So that could help you more clearly and distinctively hear his voice as Got opposed it. to the voice of Horatio. Sure. For example, using Hamlet as an example. Does that make sense? It does. I, yes. I think there's a, there, all the characters have sound a little like Jonathan. Okay. And Jonathan is not in the story. That's me. So it's like, I want to just continue to. Right, right, right. Well, well this, I mean, there are aspects of Jonathan, we could say. This is true. True. Okay. 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 So, I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, you, if they are really clear in what they want mm -hmm. and you've really done a, a, a thorough job, in your opinion, distinguishing them, like Jonathan, you know, this, this character, whatever, X wants that and there they are doing such and such and this character eh, wants that and there they are doing such and such in the scene. Um, then maybe it's really time, if you've really done that kind of character detail work, then maybe it's really time to get some more voices reading it. Sure. Because unless you read your work a lot, it's hard to hear the different, you know, you know. Um, I think I'm at an earlier, I think I'm at this day where you're talking about, I think my protagonist has that clear A to okay. B. We Great. have a get that. But Great. I think some of those other characters are more not foils but they're in the service of and i feel like oh no this will thicken this up if okay, we have clearing that okay. yeah, yeah 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 and and you could you know to thicken up the plot or the story through character you know right i mean you think sense. of you know yeah you think of again uh, you know hamlet it's it you know it, it it the story is enriched the more we learn about his character the deeper and more interesting the story gets right you know so it's a good way to go about it okay. this we're giving a try yeah absolutely i yeah need to yeah it felt a little rusty getting back okay. into well, it so sure. i was like very but... brave though for you to like move you know halfway across the country dust it off take it out read it you know very cool so you know i mean really that's a big give yourself a pat on the back bro that's a big it's all right. Kyla, who's also in this call, and I'm calling her out. She and I have like a deadline in like oh. later this spring to like share our work with each other. So oh, hey, Kyla. All right. we're, uh, she, she's going to hate me for that. But that no, I'm just kidding. Uh, just to try and keep pushing on on this. So but anyway, thank you. Fantastic. Really do appreciate that. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. All right, we don't have any other questions at the moment. Oh, we've got a thumbs up from Tamir. I'm taking that as a perhaps a question. You ready? Did that work out? Mute. Okay, here there we you are. Go. Yeah. Okay. I made a mistake. I did not know that we were pro uh, supposed to, to write in silence. So <laughs> I did not write anything, but then I started writing something else. And that is very interesting to me that just the fact that everybody was focused on writing kind of made me want to write too, even though uh, I was just actually doing research, but that's fine. Uh, so my question is, um, well, first of all, thank you for doing this. This is absolutely amazing. Um, and to actually see you is equally amazing because I love okay. your place. Um, so I don't know what your process is and if you can relate to what my process is, but mine is definitely that I write intuitively mm -hmm. and I pick up the pen and boom, off it goes. Mm -hmm. And then I wake up in the middle of the night and I have a wonderful idea. And if I don't jot it down, it's gone. Mm -hmm. So the light goes on and I write it down. And then what happens is I have this very rich, very interesting 
very intricate sometimes, um, I don't know, nuggets from another world. Mm. And I am not sure what the process is of putting the logic and the organization back into it. And I'm always a little bit nervous about disturbing that flow versus what it needs to be uh, a play with a beginning, middle, and end. Although that that is the easy part. There are there are more complicated parts, which is for me the transitions. So there we go. I hope that was clear. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just like how it sounds. It sounds like you're very, you know, uh, aware and very onto yourself in terms of what your process is, and you're. In, it's something that's very enjoyable to you. It is. So, sounds like it. So we don't want to touch that. It's working for you. That's fantastic. Um, that sounds like maybe the first that helps you get the first draft down, or you said the nuggets from the, another world. Mm. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they sound very yummy. Um, so, they so, are. so yeah, okay, so you want to keep that, and then you, the beginning, middle, and the story. The story is pretty. I mean, it it kind of it sometimes is more clear to me than it is to others, mm-hmm. uh, in the mm-hmm. sense that it makes a kind of. Um, well, intuitive sense that, yes, that's what does happen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what people see as climax, uh, I see at the end as a soft landing, not as a climax. Mm -hmm. So maybe my ideas of what I am reaching for is not the usual classical way of climax towards Mm -hmm. the end. Sometimes it's Mm -hmm. in the the beginning, actually. Mm -hmm. And then the understanding of it, which to me is more climactic, Mm -hmm. is in the end. Without going into further detail about a particular play, uh-huh. um, but there, I mean, yeah, as you know, as we all know, there's so many ways to tell a story or yeah. a song or whatever. So I, I think, I mean, I think that, I mean, you just stick with the way that's working for you, you know, and we'll, you know, the readers or the audience members will catch up to you or be along for the ride. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that. That's okay. I mean, it sounds like again, it sounds like your process and your what you're coming up with is very pleasing to you. Um, it's, you said something about the transitions. So what do you, you said you have different. Uh, some of the plays that I've written have um, flashbacks mm-hmm. that feed into the now time. Mm-hmm. But I find that I need to actually put more signposts for the audience oh. to follow me. Uh-huh, and when uh-huh. I have done that, then it works, but it always feels artificial to me. Uh, and maybe because the nature of memory and the nature of um, processing that memory in now time is different for each one of us. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, yeah, you can also play. I mean, the signposts you say are helpful to audience members, but they feel artificial to you. So what yes. would... I mean, where's a where's a meeting of the middle ground? Where's the middle path on that? You know, I mean, uh, those things do trigger yeah. our memories. You know, I mean, it might not be yeah. a sign like memory coming up. Here we go. You know, that feels artificial, but maybe you can find a more uh, natural or subtle or way that feels more effective for you. Mm. You know, okay. yeah, um, yeah. Um, there are so many again there's so many ways to tell a story there's so many ways to trigger have a signpost for a flashback or a transition mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. um but just experiment keep experimenting you know and, and as you wake up you you like to wake up in the middle of the night and write ideas down which just sounds really beautiful um start thinking about you know what could be cool transitions here you know you're you can get some nuggets yeah. that way yeah you know? there's also another thing that i found very, very, very helpful. And that is, I'm writing a play right now. Um, It's actually pretty, it's it's finished and it's it's going to be read, Mm -hmm. but um, I have two worlds going on and Mm -hmm. there's the other world and then the, the, this world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I originally saw the other world as completely a spiritual world with a spirit guide that is helping a woman who is dying and her uh-huh. helping her in her in her passing. Uh-huh. And then somebody said to me, oh, I am so appreciative that you wrote about near-death experience. And I wasn't. Uh-huh. But 
it was such an interesting feedback from the audience mm-hmm. that said to me, well, if through magic and through near-death experience is how she and others, I, I presume, will understand the spirit world, then why don't I use that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's just, I, I don't know why I'm saying this, but it's just something about feedback that resonates and mm-hmm. that somehow is translatable into how we then take the play that we are given and give it back to, mm-hmm. to the audience. Mm-hmm. It sounds like I'm, that was very helpful feedback too. It was phenomenal feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's very fortunate. You, you got, I mean, you were fortunate to get feedback. That's very helpful, you know. Have you ever had that where it like a feedback will change the direction of how you perceive a play, your play? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm, I'm, I'm so focused on you guys right now. That I'm got it, got it, got me. it. <laughs> but, um, I'm sure, sure. Let's just say sure. Yes, of course. Um, Why not? But um, I'm just I'm just focusing on, on, on you all right now. Um, okay. But but it's 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 a very it's a big gift to have someone give you some insight and some and some um, ways to see your work. And then you can sort of rethink it in your head. Um, certainly notes, you know, or yeah. notes are, have always been very helpful to me from different various people in my mm. career. Um, but, uh, but, and also, you know, you also, and you know, you all know, you, we've all received feedback that's less than helpful. So right. um, we, we're mindful of that too. But, um, sounds like you're on a great road, Tamir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tamir. All right, Phoebe. Hey, Phoebe. Did that work? Oh, almost. There you uh, go. I apologize ahead of time. I lost internet there for a minute and I fiddled around and I got it back. There you go. Um, but um, so I've got a real problem. <laughs> so I've been working on one particular play. It's a musical for 10 years. Okay. I've had a 29 hour reading. We've done oh, the whole thing. I've got all the all the stuff. Congratulations. And, uh, and I put it away for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, had to do other things during COVID. And now I've brought it back out. And um, I find myself needing a unifying concept. So I wanted to ask you about the whole area of concept. Mm-hmm. So, um, and in change, in, and I think I found the unifying concept. But it means to me, it means that I need to completely dissemble and rewrite, which is terrifying and also very exciting because I didn't like it before. (laughs) So um, I feel as if there's hope. Right. Um, Wow. But uh, so, So you know, that's a unifying. What is a unifying concept, Phoebe? Uh, you asking me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, asking yeah. Because you, you've been asked to find one, and you think you know what it is. So I just don't know what. what you're um, well, yeah. I've got too much going on. So oh, okay. there's jazz. The music is is well, it's it's um, post jazz, but it's uh-huh. jazz. And um, so then you get this story, and then you get some Shakespeare stuff. And uh-huh. you've got all these things, all these different elements mm-hmm. that I. It, I, I, I believe um, there ne- I needed to find what was in common mm-hmm. in all of those elements so that I could redo a structure that makes sense. It, I don't know, help me. Oh, <laughs> so I'm finding, I think, I think what I need to do is start writing a narr- uh, writing a description of what the play is. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. Oh, those crazy people calling you. Oh yeah, there you okay. go. Good. So, so um, you said a narrative. So, a unifying concept we could say is a story. Do you, it does it have? Is there a story? Um, oh, there's a story. Okay. Um, but I think okay. that what I'm realizing is that the entire thing is about war. Well, that's so a unifying, that is a unifying concept, right? And it changes what everybody says and why they're saying it. Okay. And for the position that they're saying it. Okay. So um, there's a race war. There's mm-hmm. um, jazz is having its own war with um, uh, black identity. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's um, 
just wars throughout. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody's fighting, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and, but, but it's a big picture. So a unifying concept to me uh, then can also take on the structure the, the structure could also be at war. And I think if, if and then, then if you have things happening at five different levels, my hope is that it's the unifying concept that will make it worthy of anybody watching it. Because it'll then becomes art and not just story. I mean, storytelling is an art, but it becomes more. Huh? Does that make sense? If it makes sense to you, I'm, I, I don't really, I, I'm trying to follow you there. Um, okay, it's a, you jump, you, when you, when you separated storytelling from art, that's where you lost me. Cause I'm sorry, like, yeah, oh, oh, I didn't know insulting. storytelling was not Yeah, no, I didn't no, mean it that no, no, it's just like, I just, like, I'm just, I just trying to. I just uh, meant it so that there's more than one level. Sure. Okay. 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 Yes. Yes. So, so what you need to do is you, you have these, you have a script full of amazing things that are going on. And you feel like if when you sort of unite all the elements under one concept, then it will be much more compelling. Then these these it will give these things a depth and a resonance. That That's will my be hope. More watchable. Okay. That's my hope. It, okay. It'll have it'll become part of a converse a national conversation. It'll have okay. its own place in a conversation. Okay. Because. Okay. So what's your game? What's your game plan? How are you going to go about rewriting it? So you're going to have to rewrite it, which is well. I'm thinking that I have to write about it as if I am um, uh, a critic. Mm-hmm. So I want to write the critic. I want to write the. Uh, I want to analyze it before I write it. In other words, I want to. <laughs> I want to hear what the critic would say, mm-hmm. this, so that I can then go back and make it that. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So it, it makes it makes sense. It it is not what I would suggest, but it make but if it if it's I mean it's kind of um it's sort of uh, at a distance and very analytical rather than mm. in a story and talking about people doing stuff because um and this is but but if that seems like a like a natural way for you to go about it then i would say totally go about it that way you know i mean if that seems like what's moving you like yeah i want to i want to yeah i want to think about what people might be saying about this piece my piece and then get into the writing of it that way if that seems like a natural way for you to go about it then i suggest you you go for it um there are other ways like character story those kinds of things um, for example, we we're talking about Hamlet with, with Jonathan earlier. I mean, Hamlet is a story, you know, but I would also say it's a work of art. I mean, I think, you know, um, <laughs> it's a work of art, you know, it, it generates conversations wherever it is, wherever it is staged and has done for hundreds and hundreds of years. But there's a very compelling story there. Um, and there's lots of uh, things going on. Uh, a unifying concept. I would not know off the top of my head what the unifying concept of Hamlet was, but I could tell you the story of it. See, um, I would just, it's just general, it's just my opinion. Like they say in the Big Lebowski, this is just so my opinion. But um, I would, I encourage artists, writers to stay inside the storytelling and allow the brilliant critics and scholars to take that, you know, hundred, you know, a view from a thousand feet up and dissect it. Um, We live, we are, we work with the living. Um, You dissect the dead (laughs) post-mortem after it is done, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I really, you know, I would encourage you to just get into the story of it. What's the story? Who are these people? Race war. You know, I got to say, if, if I see a play about a race war, I don't know. You know, to, if that's going to start a national conversation where I'm, from my point of view, personally. But if you tell me about a person who's in the middle of something like that, I'm going to lean in. You know what I mean? Um, okay, let's try. Can I just try one more angle? Sure, so sure. in jazz, for instance. So okay. you have, you've got your theme. 
And so you mean that's the music. The music. So you get okay. your theme, and there it is, and you can kind of hear it. Mm -hmm. But then you break into solos and people that are um, doing it their way, they're, mm -hmm. they're uh, improvising. Mm -hmm. And then you listen to all that and it gets pretty interesting mm -hmm. storytelling. And then you come back to the theme again. So that theme that I'm mentioning is what I call unifying concept. So like the head and jet. Yeah. Right. So I don't uh, just... Yeah, but but music asks asks different things of us than okay. a play or a musical. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. um, I would say that we could use it to help us write and think about writing. Um, um, for example, uh, you know, if I think of just mention about the death of the last black man, the whole entire world, aka the Negro Book of the Dead. That's you know, I listened to a lot of jazz when I wrote that. It has a head. We have departures. Um, it comes back to what you would call unifying concept. I would say the story. I would say just as an exercise, start using that word just because I'm going to go out on a limb here. I still, I'm old school. I still use the word women to talk about certain people. I know that word is falling out of fashion. I still use the word story, you know? I mean, there are some words that can exist alongside of words that have become more um, of use and perhaps more useful in, in current culture, but I still think there's a place for words that we used uh, last year too, you know, and I don't think story is a bad word. And I don't think story has been wrong, you know, of its resonance and meaning, uh, especially when concepts are so tied to the marketplace and talking points are what we're all supposed to be writing about these days. Give me a story any day. That's just my opinion. Give me a beautiful story, you know, I've, I've, I, okay. I, you know, so I'm just encouraging you to embrace story. There's a lot of, there's a lot of wealth in a story um, and a story can resonate. Uh, Oedipus, you know, you've heard the play Oedipus, Oedipus Rex, you know, right? I mean, I can't, can't tell you, your score is small, you know, oh, sorry. To yeah. Have you, yes, you've heard of the play yes. Oedipus or I'm trying to think of any play that, you know, the glass menagerie, you know what I mean? Fences. Those are stories, right? Those are stories. Those are people. Um, uh, I don't know any play I can, th I can think of. Uh, those are stories about people. Um, the Music Man, <laughs> Carolina Change, <laughs> you know? Um, now I've run out of things, <laughs> examples, but um, so. I got it. I'm gonna get off my soapbox. Keep in I touch. Like keep, keep I in like touch, it. Phoebe. Keep in touch, keep in touch, okay? Thank you, I like it. Okay. Thank you, I appreciate your question. Good question, great question. Um, all right, so Kevin has a question. Yeah, Go for it, Kevin. We got about eight minutes left. Uh, um, I've been curious about, I mostly like monologues and I feel like I'm struggling to find kind of like a voice. Um, like I read a lot and I'm finding whatever I'm reading kind of ends up, I end up sounding like that. So like if I infect my brain by reading like too much Twitter, I sound like Twitter. Um, I just read like Rachel Cusk, so now I sound like a woman going through a divorce with a problematic apartment. Like, um, so, <laughs> so I'm I'm like trying to figure out how to sound like me, but also enjoy kind of encountering other people and their writing too, if, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's a, maybe a therapy question more than this question. No, well, that's okay. <laughs> it's a great question. It's a great question because you. It's great that you read and read widely and enjoy other people's work. That's awesome. Um, I would say uh, step away from their work a little bit. You know, if you're mm -hmm. so easily influenced, you know, then you can take pauses between your digestion of their work. If, if you know so um if you're working on yeah. a piece say you know maybe maybe don't read anything the day before get still in your own head so you can hear your voice which is a mixture of all the things that are going on in your life surely but 
if it's a it's if it's a concern for you, then I would say less of them, you know, you know more of you. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 I mean. John. Yeah, I mean, I guess mm -hmm. making that room for like silence and reflection has not been a part of my writing process, but I, I feel like I get involved and feel like, oh, I must like accomplish by like putting pen to paper, but maybe that like extra space can be helpful too. I think, Kevin, I think you said it and better like than I did. The, like, yes, extra space for silence and contemplation. Do you have a meditation practice while we're on the subject of? Uh, no. <laughs> no, two, two, mi two minutes first thing in the morning sitting you know if you can sit cross-legged great if you can't you know just sit in a chair or whatever you know um to get your timer a timer like this just that just does time two minutes close your eyes breathe create space for that small still voice within you know um also, when you do write, you can try, look, I have all these little things here. <laughs> you can try, ooh, look, they're ear, not ear, not like these, you know, but the ear, what do you call them? You know, like you wear when you go to hear a concert, you yeah. know, like, right? Those, those are really good because what you hear is like, <laughs> it helps create <laughs> silence in your head, which is really awesome. Um, also, if you have a 10 year old, it helps keep the noise up. But, um, but those, that's helpful. So meditation practice, start out with two minutes every day, every morning, that could help. Or if you can't do two minutes, do one minute. One minute is also good. And also um, fewer, re read a little less. Yeah. Because you might be scared of not having anything to say. Yeah, I think that's part of it. And that's yeah. okay. That's okay. Well, thank you. That, that was helpful. Thanks so much. You're welcome. You're welcome so much. Good question. Great question. Actually, never. I don't think we've ever gotten that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kevin. Well, we've got about three minutes left. Three minutes. I don't know that I see a question at the moment. Gonna say hi to, to um, Alani. <laughs> um, say hi to you. Now I'm spacing on your name. Says Adam. So wait, 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 wait. Oh, Milani's got a hand. Up. Oh, Milani. Crystal. Crystal. I was gonna say Crystal, and I'm like, wait a minute. I know someone named Crystal. It's you. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> Milani's got her hand up. What's happening, it's... Melania? Hi, Susan. Hi, Melania. How you doing? I'm very well. Good to see you and. I want to share with you one thing. I am still they are dancing with my one woman play, trying oh, to, cool. to find, yes, but that's good. But what I want to share with you is that my daughter, my 11 year old daughter, Chloe, mm -hmm. for Black History Month, chose you to write her work. So he presented about you and the entire cast, and her work was the one that the teacher loved the most oh. <laughs> yes and they yes and so oh. she said that she's so inspired and she she looked at me that i feel so inspired by by you mm -hmm. so i wanted to say thank you i know that we have three minutes but oh. to say thank you because what you taught me and I, you are teaching me and i think that all our my classmates is that being in the work Mm -hmm. Even when maybe we have some conflicts or something, it's something good. It's nice. It's the way to to be there, to you know, to to have communion with the work, mm -hmm. to listen to the spirit, to be this, trying to to find this silence in our heads in order to to say what we need to say mm -hmm. to our character. So, and she saw me so inspired by you mm -hmm. that she chose you for the work. And it was a huge success at school. <laughs> so I wanted to say thank, thank you for working. Thank you, daughter Chloe, so much. That's so very kind. Yes.
Thank you. Well, and we're proud of you, Melania, because and all of you and Crystal too. I mean, those of you who have been coming and coming and working and working, even if this is just your first time here with us, you know, it takes a tremendous amount of courage to mm. sit down and create something, whether it's a song or a poem or a play or a novel or a painting or whatever, or just get through the day. Hey, let's be real. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, right? It ain't yeah. easy. It ain't easy these days. And, and you know, and we, uh, I mean, it's saying it ain't easy for, for the likes of, you know, most of us, you know, there are people, and we know there are people in, you know, in, in other parts of the world who are having it really hard right now. And how yeah. fortunate we are to have internet connection, even though it might be dicey, you know, and have a place to sit down where we can be, feel safe and, and do our work. I mean, what a blessing that is. And what, a, what an effort. We are giving something to the greater good. Um, by showing up mm -hmm. and you are a blessing for all of us no. I think yes thank you oh thanks Melania oh, that's so nice ah, well, that's a great note to end on <laughs> yeah it's six o'clock right we'll on. be back next week right on we sure will okay have a good week y'all bye 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 you're the best